that you're putting his mind on the gun. Smack him in the mouth first. Put his mind on his mouth, then grab the gun. Oh, you're crazy. I said, no, that's not crazy. This is a matter of dealing with yourself. Because there's nobody there but you. You know, go take the gun or each will show me. So I said, don't, you know, so I got involved. So here I go. Bruce McGregor Davis and I go over to Henry's house. Uh, I got a knife on my leg. So I cut Henry's ear. Uh, and I take the gun, he shoots off on the wall, and I throw the gun one way, and I throw the knife the other way. And I give the kid the, the knife, and I say, that's how you do it. Don't bring me into none of this no more. Don't bring me into no violence. Then I'm thinking, I gotta scare this character. So I am what they call in the underworld, I'm a bad actor. I say, all right, now I got to kill you, Henry. He says, oh, don't kill me. I said, if I don't kill you, you're going to tell my parole officer. He's going to put me back in prison. He said, no, I won't, I won't tell. I said, you give me your word as your bond, and your bond as your life, you won't tell. He said, I give you my word as my bond, and I, and I look back at the Frenchman, and I, the Frenchman's standing there with the knife, and the gun's laying over on the table in Norway. I think the king of Norway has got the gun. The North Sea's dying, right? So uh, all them Walders, we were Walders in what, in the 60s? 60s, yeah. So uh, uh, I looked at, the, at the, the Frenchman with the knife, and he's got, he's got Henman. And I said, uh, you got this? He gave me his word as his bond, and you got this life here. And he said, yeah. I said, are we in the truth here? And he said, yes, we're in the truth. I said, OK, uh, uh, I'm through with this. I'm gone out of this, and I left. Uh, we patched his ear up, we put some scotch tape on his ear, we fixed him up. He's back on the road. No problem. I'm out of there, man. I straightened it out. I got him paid, so I said, pay the kid what you owe him. He paid him the money. Uh, they transferred the cars and made their deals. You dig what I'm saying? All I was was the administrator there. I administrated justice to those kids, you dig, was what it amounted to. So then Henman got well, he got the knife, oh no, he got the gun from... He got the gun, he said, I'm gonna go kill that sort of little lover. And he said, well, and Bobby said, no, I can't let you do that. He said, you gave me a word. And he said, well, all right, that don't mean nothing to me. You know, he said, he cut my ear. I'm gonna go blah, blah, blah. And Bobby said, no, I can't let you do that because he was standing up for me. Now I'm standing in his place. In other words, I was standing in his place. That's that line I'm trying to explain to you, you dig? When you walk that line and you're in truth with that cross, in that chapel, in that Bible, in that book, with that crown, and that whatever it is that you guys are, you know, all the way back to where it started with Claymore and Wilson and all them dudes and all them graveyards and all them people that went through all them changes. All I'm doing is walking on the end of you guys. I'm way down here on the end of your foot. I'm walking. I'm running like a little rabbit, in, in, you know. No, so Henman killed Henman. That's the way it comes down to. If you look at it from the, if you, uh, wait a minute, no, no, it come, it come like this. Uh, uh, him and says, uh, he pushed by, he pushed by Bobby, and Bobby handed him the knife, a Mexican silver knife with a big eagle on it, from that medicine man that smokes that, uh, smokes that stuff that's got the mushrooms around his neck, that comes from the sweat lodge, that comes from the man, that comes from the universe that comes from God with this knife and that heart, you dig? And he says, I'll not let you harm him because he was standing in my place and he's my brother. You, you, you know Bogus? You know Bogus down in Hollywood? He'll witness to that with his life because he owes me one on that. You see what I'm saying? In other words, I've got more lives on this road than mine. In other words, there's only one life, true, true enough, but there's many perspectives towards that life. So. When he pushed by, he gave the knife to Hinman and told him to kill me. And Hinman says, I don't want you. Boop. Bobby said, you gave your word as your bond, and your bond is your life. If you make one more move towards it, I'm taking you away. And he made the move. Bobby took it, and he died. I'm three days down the road, man. I'm in San Diego partying at the zoo. I don't have any idea what the hell's going on there. Well, now you're a Bobby. No. 
No, how do I owe Bobby? I faced women. No, no, I faced his when I cut the ear. You know, I faced his. I faced his. A lot of people saying that one of the reasons that those people die in jail of life is to try to get Bobby out. All right, now that's another game altogether. That's another game altogether, sure. That can be explained, too. There's a place called Indian Mesa where we have fires and we play music. And we make big circles, like you do with the stones. We make big circles and we sing. Ah! And we put our souls in each other, you dig? In other words, and we have sex with each other. We suck each other, you know, and we suck each other. We do all the things that you guys are not allowed to do in your culture. But in the culture I live in, we throw all that out the window, and that's what I guess you'd call Satan. Okay. You know, I wouldn't call it Satan, I'd just call it... Just call it whatever, you call it the time of day if you want. But uh, that was what was happening in those times, in those days, you know. So, uh, uh, so what happened on the scale of life? Huh? What happened on the scale of life? How did you, so you, so you didn't have a beef to try and say to those people? No. Did you know this? Uh, I had met uh, a couple of them, two or three times. A uh, photographer that used to do that. There's some homosexuals there, and I knew a lot of the homosexuals. Uh, um, you knew Sean Taylor? No, not newer. I've seen him. Did you Yeah, we spoke. Hi, you know, but uh, nothing. Did you have other people? Uh, 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 that's another thing. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Now, we're, we're on this mountain. Isn't it? Let's don't, let's, don't, uh, let's don't get too separated from it. Uh, in a circle, in a circle in his majesty's court, where everybody's got a knife, and everybody, the Duke of Booby Scott got a Ramalama Demi Bampa, and he's doing so and so. But in reform school, they have what they call a Duke. He's the guy that beats everybody up. Duke University, North Carolina. The Duke co holds uh, your land over Scotland, if I'm not, mis if not mistaken, right? So the Duke don't eat tuna fish. So He's sorry, Charlie, please. I'm sorry, Charlie, but he don't eat tuna fish, okay? I'm not unaware of around here. That's one reason we're doing this interview, because you said in your letter, around here. So I am around here, Claymore, and I'm around here on this course, and I've run this course a few times. So up on this flat where all these dead Indians are, you know, and we're sitting in a circle trying to figure out how we're going to do certain things. And here comes a guy from Texas who's his mama's boy. He gets me in trouble going one way. Okay. Then Bobby gets me, gets busted. Then everybody comes around and says, Bobby's in jail. I said, I got, I, you know, I'm not going to let my brother in jail. In other words, I'm very strong in the brotherhood. And I don't let my brother down. In other words, uh, like, I know I am my brother. If I don't help me, I'm not, you know, there is no brother. So they say, what do we do? I said, I, I don't know what to do. Get him out of jail. He said, how do we get him out of jail? I'm not educated. I don't go to school, man. I don't know how you do it. You know, that's what you went to school for. You do it. You do it. Well, how do we do it? I said, how do I know what you do? I don't have no idea what you do. I know you owe me your life, Tramp. You owe me your life. Pay me or get the hell away from me. You know, it's that simple. You know, I stand up for you. I march to hell with you. I go through all the things it takes to save your life, and then you come back to me and tell me, you dig what I'm saying? You got a brother over here. Get him out of jail. They said, uh, well, ooh, uh, uh, and they said, well, we'll get a lawyer. And someone said, well, you get a lawyer. Lawyers just could take your money and lie. Somebody else said something else. Somebody else said something else. I got in a truck. I went to Big Sur. I was gone for two or three days. I came back. Now, here's one of my sins, and I'll, I'll confess to you clearly and openly to the world, I never realized how much mind I was holding with those people. I never realized how weak you people are outside. I've been raised up inside with these guys. These guys are powerhouses. These guys are strong men. I've been raised up amongst men all my life. And I go out there and I tell somebody, come over here and sit down. They go, whoop, you sit down. They say, how do you do that? I, I don't know. What? You know, in other words, like, they do it to me in prison. That's the way this guy tells me. He said, get over this cell wall, put your hands in law. So I learned to do what he says, and I just go out and do what he says. So I'm reflecting reflections on that are reflected to me, and I can reflect no more to you than it's been reflected to me, you dig? 